Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and today it's windy, it's nasty out, so it's time to make a video and I'm going to revisit one of my most popular astronomy videos and that's on how to collimate a telescope. All optical instruments, be it a nautical sextant or a telescope, require collimation in order to function properly. So for example, on the sextant, the mirrors need to be properly aligned in order to give valid readings. Likewise, on a telescope, we need to have the lenses and mirrors properly aligned in order to be able to focus on a distant object like a star. And that process is called collimation. Now, if you look at the diagram here, you'll see that the starlight comes in from the right side of the diagram. It comes back in parallel lines, bounces off of that primary mirror on the left. It's reflected up to the secondary mirror in the center. And then that secondary mirror reflects it back through a hole in the primary mirror to the eyepiece. Now, in order to properly focus the telescope, all of these light paths have to be aligned properly. So, let's go down to the dining room table and collimate a Ritchie Cretion telescope. Okay, so this is an 8-inch Ritchie Cretion telescope. You'll notice that in the front there's no corrector plate. And on the back, I have the standard focuser. Right here, I have what's called a tilt plate. Now what this does is it moves this entire uh, focuser arrangement up, down, left, and right. On the back here, we have a laser collimator. And what we do when we turn that laser light on That shoots a laser out of that small hole in the middle. It bounces off of the secondary mirror in the front and then comes straight back and hits the target on the laser collimator. As you can tell, this is quite high. That light should go directly back into the hole. So our telescope is out of collimation. So let's go ahead and start collimating it. Now to do the collimation, we need a couple of tools. First, we need a light. And we're going to go ahead and put that in the telescope so that we can see the back side of this secondary mirror. Then what we need is just an inspection mirror, which you can get at any auto parts store. And we'll put that in and we'll have a look at the back of the secondary mirror. Let's go see if we can get an angle here. Now, you can see the red dot on the back of the secondary mirror. And right next to it, you see a small black circle. What we want to do is we want to put the red dot directly in that circle. And the way that we adjust that is we come around here to the back and we're going to adjust this tilt plate. Now these large Allen heads adjust the plate in and out. And then these two small ones on either side of it lock it in position. These can also be used in a push-pull type arrangement. So the idea is, is we want to go ahead and get that laser right in the center of that little black circle. Okay, so we've been fiddling with it for a couple minutes. Let's go ahead and have a look. So right there, you see that laser dot is directly in the center of that little black circle on the back of the secondary mirror, or the face of the secondary mirror. Let's go here to the back and see what this looks like. Now, as you can see, the laser dot is center line, but it's just a little bit high. The way that we adjust that is we get an Allen wrench, and we look at these three collimation adjustment screws on the back of the secondary mirror. So, since we're a little high, chances are that's going to be the screw that we need. Let's go ahead and slowly turn that and see what happens. Now, as we move it down, now we're right about there. So about right there. Yeah. So it looks like a nice 
rim of laser light directly around the bullseye of that little target. Now I do want to mention a couple of things about collimation to this point. First of all, you want the shortest distance that you can get away with on the back end of this Ritchie Crateon telescope, which means put the stock focuser on it. Don't have your electronic focuser or your cameras or extension tubing or anything like that. Get it right up against the back end of the telescope. What you're trying to do is you're trying to square up the back end threads on that tilt plate to the optical axis, and that's what we've done so far. Now we'll start putting on our accessories and just recheck the process a couple of times. The only other thing that you can collimate on these telescopes is the, back, is the primary mirror. You can change the tilt of that a little bit. This particular model is not adjustable. So now we have this collimated to the basic light train. Let's go ahead and start putting our stuff on. So you see we have three sets of screws set up in a triangular arrangement. And with that, we can adjust the plate and make sure the back of this focusing head is square to the optical path that goes through it. Okay, so now what we've done is we've replaced the standard um, Crayford focuser and we've put on a Prima Luce Estado electronic focuser. We've also put on what's called an on-axis guider and then we have some extension uh, tubing behind it in our laser collimator again. Now the reason that I'm putting this shot up is it shows you an interesting thing that happens when you change your optical train. Notice the collimation has changed a little bit. That red dot is no longer in the black circle on the back of the secondary mirror. So let's go ahead and have a look at that. Now once again, we've made some minor adjustments. And as you can see, we're now right in the middle of that black circle again. So let's have a look at the back. Now, as you see, we're off just a little bit. So now what we do is we put we adjust the secondary mirror to put that laser spot right in the aperture hole that the laser comes out of. And we'll make a couple of small adjustments here. That looks good. Now we'll have a look here at the top one, because it's a little high. Let's see what we do here. Oh, wrong way. Let's bring it down the other way. Okay. Now we'll come over here to this one. Wrong way. And then just back up slightly. And there we go. Now we're collimated. Now we just make sure that these little, the small set screws are tight. Just kind of get them to resistance on the very first try and then go around and tighten them up and then just recheck the spots again. And now everything is tightened up. And as you see, the laser light is directly over the aperture it comes out of. And the Ritchie Crateon telescope is collimated. Now, the only thing that we have not addressed in this is the adjustment of the primary mirror. My telescopes don't have an adjustable primary mirror, so I've omitted that step. However, there are other techniques that involve adjusting the primary mirror. So if you have one that is adjustable, perhaps I'll do a video on that in the future. So the way that the collimation system that I'm using works is that we have a laser that's in the eyepiece. That shoots a laser light right down the optical train from your eye to the center of the secondary mirror where that little black circle is. We use the tilt plate to adjust that laser light so that it goes precisely into the middle of that circle. Then we tilt the secondary mirror to reflect it straight back into the aperture of the laser. That way we can see that the entire optical axis is aligned from the secondary mirror to the eyepiece. Now with a Ritchie Crateon, you have a couple of unique problems. The first is that the focuser is on the back of the Ritchie Crateon and it sticks out quite a ways. And on the end of that long lever, you put a heavy astronomical camera. As a result, you get some flexure in the extension tubing that brings it out to the proper back focus. 
That's why the collimation changes slightly when you put all that stuff on the back of the telescope as opposed to the basic setup. Now one other thing that I do want to touch on is, a, is the collimation of a similar type of a telescope and that's called a smith cassegrain telescope. Let's put them side by side and look at the collimation of a smith cassegrain Now the last thing I want to talk about is the difference in collimation between some different types of telescopes and how the approach to collimation is a little different. Part of the design of a Ritchie Cretion telescope is that it's got a very long back end to it. This is where all the focusing is done. And as a result, the back end of a Ritchie Cretion is very much like a refractor telescope. We've got a lot of equipment on that that causes a lot of tube sag because of the weight. As a result, we have a corrector plate. And a Smith Cassegrain telescope, the back end is quite short. We just have basically a two inch visual back, and then we've got whatever it is we put on it. Focusing, of course, is done with this knob right here. So there's no tilt plate to worry about. So what you do to collimate a Smith Cassegrain is you just turn on your laser collimator and then you go to the front of the telescope where the secondary mirror is and you have collimation screws. Now, unlike the um, Ritchie Cretion, which had some Allen wrenches out here, these have something called Bob's knobs, no relationship. These simply replace the Allen screws that would normally be on this telescope. And the way you adjust the collimation here is simply by adjusting the secondary mirror. Let's see how that works. Here is our collimation. And simply by moving the secondary mirror knobs, we adjust our collimation. And really, it's that simple. And there we go. We've got our donut right around the laser aperture. And there you have it collimation in just a couple of minutes. Now, there's one final stage that you have to do with your collimation, and that's called a star collimation. Let me show you what that means. Now, when you have all of your equipment on the back of the telescope, your focusers, your off-axis guiders, your cameras, etc., when you're ready to go, the procedure that I do is that as soon as I have the mount set up and before I do a initial focus in order to get polar alignment, I defocus a star. And what happens then is you get a donut type pattern, which you see over here right above the word slewing. Notice that the center of that donut is not in the center of the donut. It's offset. That's because once you have everything hooked up, you're still a little bit off in collimation. So what you need to do is you need to adjust the secondary mirror, which is the Bob's knobs or the little Allen heads up at the front of the telescope, until you get that donut hole right in the center of the donut. Now again, a bench collimation gets you in the right neighborhood, but when you get out and you're ready to observe, defocus a star and check your collimation you may need to tweak it just a little bit to finish off that real-life collimation and get good images. Now, with a properly collimated telescope, you'll find that your focusing is better and your images are clearer. So once you have a good bench collimation, just make it part of your setup routine to check the collimation on a star, get that little last tweak in, and you're good to go. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Clear skies, everyone, and take care. Bye.